Hello, it's Sunday the 5th of July 2020 and my name's Hannah Patton. Um, we're going to be looking today at a passage from Matthew chapter 5. I'm going to read a few verses from um, verse 21, but you might like to read the big chunk, which is um, verse 21 to the end of Matthew chapter 5, because I'm going to be um, looking at this in a chunk. And I'm going to be looking at this um, section of Matthew over the next two weeks. So uh, we're going to look at it this week and we're also going to look at it next week. Matthew chapter 5, beginning to read at verse 21. You've heard that our ancestors were told you must not murder. If you commit murder, you're subject to judgment. But I say, this is Jesus speaking, if you're even angry with someone, you're subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot, you're in danger of being brought before the court. And if you curse someone, you're in danger of the fires of hell. So if you're presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice at the altar. Go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. When you are on the way to court with your adversary, settle your differences quickly. Otherwise, your accuser may hand you over to the judge who will hand you over to an officer and you'll be thrown into prison. And if that happens, you surely won't be free again until you've paid the last penny. You've heard the commandment that says you must not commit adultery. But I say anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Challenging verses from Jesus in Matthew's Gospel. What are we to make of them? Well, um, if we look at Matthew's gospel, the book of Matthew, um, there are certain themes that start to emerge in the book. Matthew is an eyewitness um, to the life of Jesus. And so he shares with us uh, lots of different episodes of the life of Jesus. And Matthew really brings out a few themes for us. Um, so first of all, in Matthew, Jesus is described as somebody who's going to save people from their sins. Um, he's going to bring judgment as well, judgment between people who live their lives well and people who live their lives against God. Uh, there's a theme of moving from darkness into light. Um, and Matthew also talks about Jesus as bringing the kingdom of heaven um, and uh, that that is good news for people. So essentially what Matthew is trying to say is that Jesus is bringing something completely new. Jesus is bringing a new way of living and that new way of living and that new life from darkness into light, from sin into a place of freedom and repentance is called the kingdom of heaven. Jesus brings this new kingdom. So the question is for us, I guess, do we need it? Do you need it? Do you need Jesus? Do you need anything to change? Do you need a new way of life? And I often chat to people um, who say, you know, I'm a good person. Um, and you hear that a lot, don't you? I'm a good person. I, I don't really do anything wrong. And yeah, people are right. You know, actually, most people that I meet on the street are good people. Um, and the coronavirus is really showing us that there are so many people who've got so much good in their hearts. Um, and we've seen that so strongly um, shown by acts of kindness and love, um, sometimes random ones. But I, I've been pondering this myself, really, in my own life. And, and sometimes I fall into that kind of, well, do I need Jesus? You know, I'm pretty good. Um, doing all right. I haven't really done anything too bad. And then I think if I didn't have... Um, the ability to censor my thoughts. But if I just spoke really openly and freely the things that are going on in my head and in my heart, I'd be a really terrible mother. Um, I'd be a really terrible wife. I'd be an even worse vicar. Um, and I'd be a really bad friend because sometimes the things that are going on in my heart and in my mind are not the things that come out. Um, so, for example, when I'm parenting, sometimes I just feel so frustrated. Um, I just want to kind of 
shout and leave the room. Sometimes I probably do. But, you know, sometimes you just you don't have much patience left and you just hold it together because something in your brain just tells you to stop. Um, but if you were to say what you really felt, what you were really feeling, um, you you know, you'd be on really shaky ground as a parent and you'd probably really damage your children. Um, and likewise with friendships, you know, it's not just a case of someone saying, does my bum look big in this? And you saying, oh, no, it looks really nice when deep down inside you're thinking, actually, it looks terrible. Um, but sometimes we really have awful thoughts towards our friends and our family. Um, we don't always say them, but the thoughts are there in our hearts and in our minds. And I think that's what Jesus is really trying to get at in these passages. What he's saying is, look, before, um, you know, he's talking about the Old Testament times, but basically, you know, historically before, it was OK to just keep a check on the things that you did. And um, even though there was stuff going on in your heart and your mind, as long as you could just um, exhibit some self-control, um, uh, that was OK. But what Jesus is saying is, I want you to move into the next step of um, transformation. I want the transformation to actually be in your hearts rather than just externally and in your behaviour. And for me, when I when I think about that as my own, you know, challenge in, in my life is a massive challenge. I really do realise when I when I'm really honest with myself that I do need Jesus, that I do need a saviour. So when we're left in that place of, of sudden realisation, um, the Bible talks about it as being kind of almost um, convicted of sin. Um, just realisation that actually, do you know what? Deep down inside, I really have some awful thoughts and I really do need rescuing. Um, what, what can we do when we get to that point? Well, first of all, there are some practicalities. So in the reading that I've just read, Jesus talks about making peace with people. Um, and sometimes that is on the surface, even if we don't think about it in our hearts, we do think, do you know what? The best thing to do is to go out and make peace, even if I don't want to. I remember hearing, um, it was actually in a, serve, in a church where I used to work. Someone came up to me in one week and she said, you were talking about making peace um, a few weeks ago. So I went back to my brother and we haven't spoken to each other for years and years. And and I apologised and we made peace and, and now we've got a relationship again. And I was so thrilled to hear that because that is what Jesus is talking about. You know, go and make peace with people, even though it's hard. So there are practical things that we can do um, in our behaviour. And likewise, you know, Jesus talks about committing adultery by looking uh, sinfully at a woman. And, and likewise, this can refer to women looking sinfully at men, um, lusting after people. Um, now, I, I, there's a lot of ways that this can happen. It's very natural for all of us to look at somebody lustfully. Um, you know, I don't know anyone who would say they'd never have done that. Um, but we can be careful about what we do look at and we can exercise our own self-control. And I really want to challenge us, particularly on the area of pornography. Um, it's very common for people to watch porn. Um, it's just so normal um, these days for people to watch porn regularly. And um, I've just had a little look at statistics and actually statistically a high percentage of people who are um, who feature in pornographic material are actually trafficked. They're human human trafficking victims. Um, so aside from the fact that um, it is anyway something that's not healthy for us, it could actually be contributing to human trafficking if we are watching porn. So I just want to challenge you with that. And you can choose whether or not you watch it. And if you need help with that, there are so many people that would help you. Um, and we are so happy to help you uh, to move forward with that problem. And we don't mind talking about it either. So there are practical things that we can do to, to stop ourselves um, to be to be in self-control um, and to actually make the decisions that are going to be uh, conducive to living life in a better way. But also Jesus wants to challenge us to walk the way that he walked. And as you probably know, that Jesus's journey took him ultimately to the cross. And when he went to the cross, he died for us. He died, he took on um, death, 
so that we don't have to take on that ultimate death, that ultimate dying. Jesus bore our sins for us when he died. He bore the punishment that we deserve. And what we're saying when Jesus, uh, when we talk about Jesus dying is actually that's where we all deserve to go. We all deserve death um, because of our sin. We're heading towards death. Um, And Jesus stepped in and he took that on himself so that we don't have to take that on ourselves. But there's something in us, that sinful side of us, sin, that belongs on the cross, that belongs, that deserves, that needs to die in order for us to be free. And when we examine our own hearts, we look at ourselves and we think, you know, what what in me really deserves to die? What in me really should die in order that I might live in a Jesus way? Um, And that can be really painful because, you know, it can be something like pride, self-righteousness. It can be things like lust where we don't want to put that to death because actually it's quite enjoyable. Thank you very much. Gossip, Um, There are so many things that we need to actually lose and put to death in order to live a life of freedom. And sometimes losing those, saying goodbye to them, leaving them at the cross where they belong can be quite a difficult thing. And that is where we're going to need the help of Jesus to help us to free, to be freed from those things. Next week, um, we're going to continue looking at these passages and we're going to look at the role of the Holy Spirit to help us uh, because we're not alone. Um, But if we are really serious about following Jesus, I do want to challenge us today that sometimes that can mean putting to death some things in our lives in order to have complete integrity as we follow Jesus um, in our hearts, in our minds and in our actions. So let's pray together. Father God, we thank you that you are a God of freedom and of love. And we pray that you would send your Holy Spirit and help us to receive your truth in our hearts. Help us to make the difficult decisions that need making, to make the practical steps that we might need to take, to address the things that we need to be honest about in our own lives. And we pray that you'd help us each step of the way. In Jesus' name, amen.